नायजू Hi there everyone, welcome back to another video. I thought I'd share with you a test that I'm going to do today with a granny charger. I want to talk about granny chargers today, but where are we starting? We're starting on the My Energy app and I'm generating 3.3 kilowatts. I'm charging the e-golf outside, but I've got the Eddy as priority, hence it's drawing 1.4 kilowatts. The Eddy's on Eco, not Eco Plus, so that's constantly drawing the minimum. And hence you can see the split of energy going across the two. But I'm going to unplug the Zappy now and plug in a granny charger and talk about granny chargers. Okay, granny cables, where do we start? Well, they should come with your electric car, even a second-hand one, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes you lose them, sometimes they break, so sometimes you need a replacement. And uh, this one, show it to you, is from Per Gear, so they've sent me this one to review and test. Uh, so far, so good, it looks okay and it does the job. What we've got is a three pin plug, a standard UK plug that plugs into a UK household outlet. On the end here, we have some intelligence, the box of tricks that does all your safety things and your intelligent things, and connected to it, a type two plug. So that plugs into the socket of the car, the electric car, standard type two. And that's all it is. So the difference between this and an electric car charger, a standard one, is the power. The power that it produces. Because it's a standard plug, a 13 amp uh, plug, and does it say that? Yes it does. 13 amp fused. Good job. So because it's lower power output you're going to charge a lot slower. So it's handy for overnight charging. But when are you likely to use these? You're not likely necessarily to use them at home because hopefully you'll have installed a higher speed charger like the Zappi at home. When you're likely to use this is when you're out and about and you're visiting someone that doesn't have a car charger, but of course they do have a house socket so you can plug into that. And yes, it leads to some questionable tactics and practices of using electric car chargers with um, extension leads and all sorts of dodgy things, but we're talking about using these sensibly. Are they safe to use? Yes, they are. Otherwise, they wouldn't be provided with the electric car in the first place. And the way to make sure they're safe, I would always get one that has, as this one does, a button to reduce the power. This one can change down from 13 amps to 10 amps and all the way down to 8 amps, so that's 1.7 kilowatts. The lower the power you're charging at, the slower the car will charge, of course, but the less heat there will be. So the less power, less heat, less heat on the box, less heat on the plug and the socket more safety. So that's what I always do. When I'm using a granny charger, I always plug in and change the charging power to the lowest possible. Because normally, I'm at a destination, I'm at a friend's house, I don't mind how many hours it takes to charge. Anyway, let's plug it in and see how it works. Uh, I installed the Zappi charger, but at the same time we installed a three pin outside socket. The idea of that is I can be charging the car on the Zappi, but also I could be cleaning the car, hoovering it from the socket, or charging another electric car on the granny charger. So I have the ability to charge two electric cars at once. So this is where I'm going to plug it in. This is where I'm going to plug in our granny cable. So I've just decided to put the control box on top of the charging socket because unfortunately there's not a lot of lead from the three pin plug to that uh, charging socket. So rather than leave it dangling from the wall and hopefully I can see it a little bit clearer there, I'll put it on top. That just leaves to plug in the type two cable. Straight away I can see it's flashing blue at the moment, that's good news and it's trying to sync to the car. And that's all you have to do with the granny cable, that is now charging. Let's go and have a look on the tablet and see what it's charging at. So I can see from those AC loads of 3.8 kilowatts, including what the house is using, that is charging at 13 amps. Now as I said I'd rather charge at 8 amps, so I need to change that. So unfortunately I can't do that while it's actually charging, so we can't see it interactively. It does require me to unplug the cable, then reset it to the lower amps and then plug it back in again. So let's go and do that now. Oh. 
Okay, that's done, and uh, the AC loads are much, much lower now, as you can see. Um, we've got 1.9 kilowatts on the AC side, so it is now charging at a much lower speed. Probably about 1.6, 1.7 kilowatts is what it's charging at. And because we've got 1.5 kilowatts solar PV there, we're hardly drawing from the battery, so that's what I'm looking for. One of the other good things about charging with a granny cable is it's constant power, constant load. So although you've got solar fluctuating, you haven't got a fluctuating power load. So you've only got one thing to adjust to. So home storage batteries have less ramp up and ramp down while you're using a granny cable. Amazing, hey, this little thing is actually quite efficient. So I've set it to eight amps. Now I'm happy that I'm happy to leave that running, ticking over, and I'll come back and check it in a few minutes or half an hour and make sure that the plug and the device and the sockets and the cable, everything is looking nice and it's not getting too warm. This device, though, actually has the temperature on it. It started out at 25 degrees, and when I've used it previously, ramped up to about 35, 36 degrees. That's not too hot. I don't think I really want to get into an argument about what's best, a proper car charger, a high-powered one, or a granny charger, because that should be obvious. If you're going to charge your car regularly, then it helps to have a high-powered car charger um, with all the timing, scheduling, and all those sort of things. A granny charger is more for those emergencies and more for those extra pieces of charging. But I'm not afraid to use it. I'm not afraid to use it on an extension cable either. If you keep the amps down, if you keep the power load down, there's no heat, there's no problem. If it's a safe cable that you've been inspected the cable it's not frayed it's not loose it's a molded socket it's a robust socket cable plug if everything's good then it should work fine keep those amps down well below the limits of the fuses and everything should be good this particular EV charger from Pergear that I've been sent to review, I'm quite happy with this. This works quite well. The only failings that I can see so far is the screen's a little bit small, so it's harder to see, and the cable between the box of tricks and the three-pin plug is quite small, so it leaves dangling from the wall. So those things could be improved if they're listening. Um, but other than that, it's a really good charger. I don't think they're very expensive, so you can have a look on Amazon and on their website. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for all of that. But this one seems quite good. The fact that it gives you all the information about volts about uh, the temperature that's on it the charging kilowatt hours there's even a feature where you can have like a boost charge and set how long you want it to charge for so it's quite an intelligent little box much better than just a dumb cable and socket so our e-golf is quite happy on charging on the granny cable and at a lower rate that'll tick over for the rest of the afternoon and all the other intelligent things will sort out where the rest of the solar power goes whether it's the eddy to the hot water or whether it's the battery charging back up from when the sun goes in it's all good news so yeah if you haven't got one get yourself a granny charger because you never know when you're going to need it when you're out and stranded or when you're at a friend's and you need a bit of extra charge so uh, i think every electric car should have a granny charger in the boot as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video if you've watched all the way through to the end. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Can you believe half the people that watch my videos haven't subscribed? Why not? Anyway, take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.